There we go. I guess it would help if I unmuted myself. What's up, guys? Can everybody hear me? Let me know in the chat if everything's sounding good. You, you just never know with these chats if, like, the audio is going to be good. So if it's good, let me know because I'm going to ditch the, the headphones for a little bit and check in with you guys in the chat. All right. Man, it's so much better not hearing yourself in your own ears. So happy, what day is it? Happy Tuesday, guys, right? Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Let's check in with the chat. We're going to have a really fun audio comparison. And if you stick around for the next 20, 25, 30 minutes, we'll say 20, 30 minutes, we have uh, the founder of Coda, um, who makes great audio products, going to join us live on the stream, answer questions, talk about the company, and you can learn about some alternatives out there to preamps. You know, everybody kind of defaults to the cloud lifter and I'm not a big fan of the cloud lifter and I'll, I'll tell you why in a little bit, but Coda sent me this new, where's my cam right here, this new inline preamp called the Stealth. Um, I have had been using this one right here, which is the SE Dynamite, um, but I don't know. I'm going to give, I'm going to give, you know, Coda a chance and, uh, use, use the stealth. I, I like it. And we'll, we'll dive into that here in a little bit, but let's, let's check in with the chat and see who's here. We have, is it R Roxanne? Can I just call you Roxanne? It just seems easier. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super happy that the Amazon link helped you and saved you some shipping costs. So that is fantastic dr elo in the house dropping by to say hello prepping for his chat and i will definitely or not chat but live stream i'll try to get over there um as soon as this live stream is done love love to check it out um let's see what else here best of luck thank you to uh appreciate it these live streams are still kind of nerve-wracking but i like them and they're a lot easier than making just like a video about products because I can interact with you guys. I can, you know, when you make a video, you might forget something and doing it live, at least for those who are watching live, I can answer questions and test things out. Like we did when we were doing the, the comparison of the audio technica AT 2040 and, uh, someone in the chat said, Hey, there's something not right with the pod mic when you're comparing it. So we got out another pod mic out of the closet and sure enough, I had a bad pod mic. I think I think this is the good one. I hope I hope it is. Um, the bad one, I need to ship back to road. They're going to take a look at it and help me out with that. Uh, Peter says, hi. What's up, Peter? Super happy um, that you're here. I got to move. I got to minimize this screen for me. There we go. And yes, thank you. I can call you Roxanne. Everybody says audio sounds good. Kevin in the house, thank you for tuning in. And then ALR is here. Um, Luis, what's up, man? Um, I think that's you, right? So welcome to the live stream. Super happy you're here. So we are talking preamps. Let me show you what preamp we're talking about. But oh, before I forget, because I always forget hitting this because it kind of feels awkward. But if you guys want to show your support anytime during the stream, there is a link in the description to my buy me a coffee page. And you know, hey, I love coffee. Buy me a coffee if you want. If not, no biggie. Glad you're here. And also, what do you guys think of this this light? Well, I can't ever point this way. That light. I just got a new light. Um, it's got a Fornell on it, Fornell, with barn doors. And it's giving me this nice little rim light. It's bicolor. bicolor. I like I like the tungsten. But anyway, enough about that. I'm, I'm really rambling. Um, Toto says he's excited to hear about the stealth. And Sammy Superstar, what's up, dude, in the house? Um, enjoyed your live stream last night. I caught a little bit of it. You had Heather on. It was, it was really, really awesome. I enjoyed it. So everybody here, make sure you hit that like button and let's kind of get into preamp. So this is what we're talking about. We were talking about the new stealth inline preamp from Coda. Like I said, this was the one I was using. This was the SE dynamite here. Let me show you the package this comes in. All right. This comes in in a, well, you know, it's a, it's a dynamite, which the packaging is really cool. They kind of nailed it on that. But the reason I like inline preamps, um, you know, you have to, when you're using a cloud lifter, right, you need two XLR cables to make it work. You need an XLR cable coming out of your audio, audio interface going into the cloud lifter. And then you need another XLR cable coming out 
of the cloud lifter and going into your mic. Um, and I'm not, there's already so many cables when you're, you have like a live stream set up and a podcast set up. I don't want more cables. So an inline preamp is really cool. You can just plug it straight into the microphone, which you're supposed to do. Um, I don't because I didn't like the look. I didn't like the look of this sticking out. Ugh. If I can unplug this of the SM7B. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right. It just kind of, right. You got this big red thing. And if you go on to like my earlier, um, video versions of the podcast, when I started using the Shure SM7B, I had it like this, but like I said, that's how you're supposed to use it. Um, I ended up plugging it directly into the back of the roadcaster because this is such a short run. I mean, we're only talking about like a couple feet, right? That you're not really going to lose any perceived uh, audio gain plugging it in straight to the interface. You couldn't tell a difference, right? Um, so I did that. Now, let's take a look at the Stealth, right? Because uh, the SE Dynamite is the closest competitor to the Stealth. And this comes in a nice little bag, which is really nice because the dynamite doesn't, I mean, that's, that's it. Just kind of looks like this shotgun shell. Um, this comes in a bag and it's, it's really, well, it's stealthy. It's nice and black and chrome. Um, it's actually a lot lighter than the SE dynamite too. A lot lighter. Um, and the reason I like this is because it's not, it's not that bad, right? Because I should have just left this unplugged. Oh my gosh. Don't cheap out on your XLR cables like Amazon. <laughs> All right. So this will plug directly into the top. And there we go. Not as bad, right? Other than this kind of cable sticking up a little too far. I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, but it's not that bad, right? It kind of just blends into the boom arm, which I really, really like. And now they've kind of forced you to use it properly because I tried this last night and this back diameter that you would plug in, if like if you were going to do the same thing as I did and you wanted to plug this into the back of the Roadcaster, which you can, this one you can't because it's slightly, I'm not sure if you can tell on here, but it, I mean, it's just, it's a hair bigger, like just just big enough to where it will not plug into the back of the roadcaster. So know that, that you kind of have to use this the way it's, it's meant. It's got to be plugged into the mic. Or if you do want to use extra cables, you can use it like a cloud lifter and, and plug an XLR cable into each side of this and just have it in the run, in the line of, you know, your mic. So you can do that. Um, why a stealth over a cloud lifter. Well, let's see here if I can, I made scenes guys. I tried to be, I tried to be prepared. Um, all right. So let's go here. Here's the Coda website. Now the Coda stealth, um, which is actually called the MB stealth inline microphone preamp booster. It's kind of a mouthful, but we'll just call it the MB stealth, um, delivers 28 dBs of clean gain. And I mean, clean gain. It's, it's really, really good. And the cloud lifter, which is kind of like has been the standard and what everybody's been super happy with using up until now. Again, I don't like it. It's another like giant, not giant, but box. I got to figure out where to put, um, delivers 25 dBs again. So you get three extra dBs and the stealth comes in at a hundred and nine dollars and ninety nine cents, whereas the SE Dynamite is one fifteen. That's why I originally went with the SE Dynamite is because you get it also delivers twenty eight dBs again, but it's cheaper than than the Cloud Lifter, which is like a hundred and fifty dollars. So you're saving forty fifty bucks using the MB Stealth, which is really awesome, and it just looks pretty. It's better, well made. Um, so that's kind of the gist of it. Why do you need a preamp? Because some of these mics are really gain hungry. So right now, um, my level 
on the Rodecaster for the pod mic, which we're currently using, is, hold on, let me get back to my main screen. Are we there? I can't tell if we're there. Hold on. There we go. It's currently set to 40, right? 40, and that's that's kind of putting me like right in that that sweet spot I need to be to get good levels, what you're hearing. And it can be a little noisy when you're monitoring. So you plug in one of these and that should allow you to bring your volume, your, your gain way, way, way down on whatever audio interface you're using. So um, before we plug this in to the pod mic, let's check back in with the chat because a few of you have um, come back. And Sammy Superstar says, oh, yeah, that looks great. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the light because it does. It looks really good. I'm so stoked on it. Um, fire. Too much cables, right? I mean, if you saw my podcast setup, there's already, I mean, you should see it right now. It's like here. There's a lot of cables right here, right? There's a lot going on right here and underneath. And it's kind of just all showed up in there into this basket I have. If you haven't seen the ultimate podcast setup video I made, make sure you go check it out and I break down everything. And that's how Coda found me, right? They sent me this because they found that video. So nice little, little note, which says, Hey Jared, I stumbled across your YouTube channel via your ultimate podcast setup video. Watch more of your content and podcast and the podcast. Great work. Hope you love our new MB stealth. Cheers, Rob. Who's the founder who's supposed to be coming on the show here in a little bit. So super cool, right? You never know what video you put out is going to be the one that somebody sees and says, Hey, I really like this. And a company might send you something to try out, which is really cool. Um, Peter really, really curious about the stealth. I'm using a, a fet head right now. So fet heads are, I'm just not a big fan, right? They're the cheapest option out there. So if you're on a budget, absolutely right. Go for it. And maybe if anybody knows in the chat, I could not find how much clean, like DB you get out of, out of a fed, how much, how much clean gain you're, it's says it'll deliver you, but it is an option, but with the build quality, I don't know. I'm like, just spend, spend the extra 20 bucks and, and get a stealth because it's a lot nicer. Um, Peter also says, totally agree. The plus one cable was too much for me. Um, Two, that's why I chose the Fed. And a cloud lifter still has a purpose because you can get like a double one and only have to have one thing, but then you're more cables and you don't need multiple of these. But um, Coda does make, let's go back to their website. Um, they do make, you know, comparable options, which are still cheaper than a cloud lifter. And still, let's see, let's check. Check, uh, does it say how many? 25. So right in there with the cloud lifter and save you a few bucks. So that's that's really cool. They make they make awesome products. And we're going to talk uh, to the founder here in a little bit. So stick around. Hit that like button. Um, that's what I like. These inline uh, setups are great. Love the stealth so far. Still reviewing it. But the clean gain really helps in post. It really does. If you... I say this all the time. If you can nail your volume and your recording in the actual recording, it's so much easier in post. Like I've had to deal with some nightmare situations where like I really screwed up not getting great audio. <laughs> um, totally my bad. And it, it sucks. It's a pain to deal with. So getting it right and having the tools to get it right makes a big difference guys makes a big difference sammy superstar when i got my sm7b it came with a cloud lifter oh so you got a little package huh that's that's cool that's not bad you know i think a lot of people don't realize that when you get a mic um oftentimes some of these higher end mics need a preamp to get the best quality out of them like the sure sm7b super gain hungry um even the pod mic is kind of gain hungry for the longest time well, even still now, I, I'm not using a preamp with it. But it sounds a lot better if you do. Um, Kombucha. Hey, Jared. Uh, new here, but in the process of trying out to find a decent, affordable, dynamic mic. And appreciate your streams to go over this kind of stuff. Yes, so 
You want an affordable dynamic mic? Absolutely. The pod mic, you can use it without a preamp, but it sounds a lot better if you do. Um, oh, 27 dB. So, you know, the Stealth and the SE Dynamite still beat out the Fethead. Um, I have I have that one. It's awesome. Oh, yes. Uh, he's talking about the dual, uh, uh, whatever, what are we calling it? What do they call it here on their website? Um, the preamp, their MB2 dual channel preamp. So he has one. It's really, really good. Oh, and he just explained it in the next in the next chat. All right. So without further ado, let's plug this in to the pod mic and give it a shot. So I'm going to mute the mic for a second so you don't have to hear, you know, pop noises and audio stuff. So give me one second. All right, and now I am back. Ooh, that's still kind of loud, isn't it? How, how's that sound, guys? So tell me, we, we're using the inline preamp, the stealth inline preamp, which still, like, it just looks good, the black. Like, this was great because it was affordable, and it's what was available at the time, and it saved me some money because, believe it or not, if you're spending $400 on an SM7B, it kind of sucks to have to spend another $150 on a cloud lifter. Yeah, like some people say, well, if you're already spending $400, what's an extra 150? Hey, I work for a living and an extra 150 bucks, it's a lot of work to get an extra 150 bucks. So if I can save a little bit, which I did and it worked, but it's red and it looks like a shotgun shell, <laughs> but it works. Um, all right. So Sammy Superstar got his cloud lifter and SM7B as package deal. So that's always great to look for the package deals. Um, and he says, I'm excited to see how it sounds and it sounds great. So let's talk about what the results, what I, what I'm doing on the roadcaster to make it sound like this. So before the MB stealth was plugged in, um, I'm on channel two, I'm using the, the pod mic, like setting they have, because it just sounds good. Um, phantom power off, right? Cause this, this mic doesn't need phantom power. And I was all the way at 40 for my voice. And I think I talk a little loud. So like if you're softer, you're really going to have to crank that up on the roadcaster. So now um, with the MB self plugged in, all preamps need phantom power, right? So you have to turn on phantom power when you're using a preamp. And it's important to know um, that most, they do make ones that have pass through um, phantom power, like not, not Coda or, or anything, but there are preamps out there that, that can pass through phantom power, but most of them like the cloud lifter and the SE dynamite and the still, I'm going to stop holding this, um, don't pass through phantom power. So you cannot use a mic that needs phantom power with these because they need phantom power. So anyway, phantom power turned on and the audio level right? It was at 40 is dropped all the way down to 12 right now from 40 to 12. And it sounds good. If you're not listening with headphones and even if you're just using like some earbuds from Apple or whatever, you probably can't tell. It probably sounds pretty close to how it was um, when it was at 40, but it makes a huge, huge difference when you're editing a podcast and, and post and you can kind of hear that noise and most of us are recording in like fairly untreated rooms. I mean, I'm lucky enough to have like, I have on the ceiling four sound uh, panels that are really, really nice. I'll have to show you guys sometime. And then over here, if you can see like these paintings over here, these are pictures I took, they're canvas. Nice. The reason I got canvas is because I can stuff it a little bit with some sound proofing, dampening, padding just to help the room and of course a carpet. But you can really hear the difference when you have to use a lot of gain on a microphone when you're editing in post. Um, Gil says, sounds good. Toto sounds great. And it doesn't uh, get in the way. Nice, uh, nice setup you've got there. 
appreciate it. I've worked really hard to get this the way, the way I want it. Um, so should we try this on, let's try, let's try it on the, on the Shure SM7B. I've never used the Shure SM7B on the Rodecaster without a preamp. So let's see how far, see how far we got to go to get it. All right. So, oh my gosh, this is so, you probably can't hear me. Let's, can you hear me yet? We're getting up there. Can you hear me yet? All right, so whew, I am all the way up to 49, uh, 49 on, <laughs> on, on the Shure SM7B on the Roadcaster. 49. Can you hear any noise? I'm not sure if you can hear any noise, again, like if you're just on YouTube, but in a podcast, if you're listening with good headphones, you probably, um, you probably can't, can't hear much. Uh, oh, you probably can hear the difference, especially when you're editing. Um, oh, and phantom power turned on too. So, um, yeah, 49 right now on on the Shure SM7B. So let's let's plug in the Coda and uh, see see what we get. And then also Leo's in the house, guys. <laughs> go subscribe to Leo's channel. The, do, how old are you, Leo? Like. I mean, you, you got to be like in your early teens, right? And you make, <laughs> this guy makes such good videos. It like blows my mind. Um, I just, I, I, I'm so busy. There's no way I could put in as much effort as he does to his videos. And it shows, he puts in a ton of effort. They look really good. So um, again, go, go subscribe. 15. Jeez, man. Like more than half my age or less than half. I don't know. You're a lot younger than me and you make amazing videos. So good job. Okay. Let's plug this in. I don't want to blow your ears out, which is probably really loud right now. So let's. All right. How, Ooh, that's still kind of loud. How was, how's that? Okay. So a little bit better, right? Well, so we're at 40 Phantom power turned off, right? Now Phantom power turned on because again, guys got to use Phantom power with a preamp and, um, we're at 14, 14, 40 to 14. When I was using the, the SC Dynamite, um, I was at 18. So a few extra dBs, even though they're supposed to be 28 and 28, the Stealth performs a little bit better. It really does. And um, I'm going to check in here on my phone. Give me a second, guys. Because um, we should have the owner of Coda joining us super quick so or super soon. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna just you know DM them on Instagram and see if the if they're coming on. All right, so hopefully we don't have a no show, but dude's a busy guy. He runs a company, so hopefully we'll get him on. Anyway. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, you can follow me on all my socials, which uh, is mainly Twitter and, and Instagram. And, um, of course, like I mentioned before, if you're enjoying this content and you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I, I love a cup of coffee. Link's down in the description. But what do you guys what do you guys think so far of the MB Stealth, um, especially compared to uh, the SE Dynamite? Let's Let's plug this in real quick. Um, I see Rob there. He's in the green room, so we'll bring him on in a second. Let's plug in the SC Dynamite, and we'll we'll kind of do the comparison. So, like I said, um, I'm noticing that I can have my uh, my gain, my levels down on the Roadcaster a little bit more with the Stealth than with the SC Dynamite.
All right. So, yeah. Can you hear? Can you guys hear much of a difference? Um, like I said, you might not just watching on YouTube, but at least when it comes to working um, with audio and post, you're going to notice a difference. And it's really nice that you don't have to have your levels up as much, right? So I'm going to switch back over to the self because, you know, oh, let's get a little closer look real quick too. So I think I showed you guys this already, but the build quality is just amazing. And guys, it's like matte black. So it's just going to, it's, it's going to fit in. Let's plug it back in. All right, and we're going to finish the rest of the show back on the SM7B because the whole reason I didn't start it with that is because we were trying to see how it sounded on, on the pod mic, which typically you don't, you don't have to use a preamp with, but it sounded really good, didn't it? Didn't it? All right, so Leo says, thanks for the shout out. Appreciate it. Everybody in the chat says you're killing it, and, and you are. So let's bring on our guest, which is Rob from Coda, the founder of Coda, I'm going to kind of clean up my, my desk a little bit too. Um, all right, let's bring him on. I should probably plug in my, we headphones now so I can actually hear our guest, right? All right. Hold up. There we go. Hey, Rob, how's it going, man? Hey, going good. How are you, Jared? Good, good. Nice pod mic you have there. Looks really, really good. We were what, just uh, trying the the stealth out before uh, before you came on um, on the pod mic, which you typically don't need right a preamp with, depending on the audio interface. But it sounds a lot better when you do. I mean, I went from forty d uh, forty on my levels all the way down to. Remind me of what it was, guys, like 16 or something or 18, which is which is huge, right? Absolutely huge. So appreciate you coming on. Thanks for the time. Excited to have um, you on and, and talk about the company. So um, I'm not like a huge, well, I'm not musically inclined at all. I <laughs> love music. Um, and the only gear I really know is kind of like what's available for creators and podcasters and, and videographers and stuff out there. So Lee, going into this, I, I actually hadn't heard of Coda, but I, I did a deep dive into your website, saw everything you made, read up about you. Um, I think it's it's really cool, you guys, when you can get a product from somebody that starts a company because he's he has a background as a musician and saw a need for the products he he's he's making. So really cool. So you want to give us a little rundown about um, who you are and the company yeah. and, and everything? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jared. Really appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, so I started Coda Music Technologies five or six years ago. I um, really developed out of my own need of I was a performing musician and a music director. And a lot of times I would end up uh, having a multitude of songs that I was needing to perform on any given day or night. And memorizing everything was just way too much to handle. So I actually used my iPad a lot for uh, charts and notes and that sort of thing. Um, but then you have to take your hands off your instrument to turn the page. So anyways, developed a our flagship product, which is Stomp Bluetooth Foot Controller. It's used primarily for musicians, although there's different things that you could do with podcasting as well. You could punch in and punch out, um, as well as we're, we're working on some new ways to really help out podcasters specifically with controllers like that. But cut the story uh, a little short, 2020 was pretty rough as it was for a lot of people. And specifically with our flagship product being aimed completely at performing musicians, sales just tanked overnight. So we realized real quick, we needed to pivot. And we went back to the drawing board and said, what are we good at? And it's developing products and having a background in audio engineering, coming up with a preamp was uh, one of the first solutions and a little bit being a uh, you know major podcast binge listener it was just like okay I, I totally know what podcasters need I hear 
awful audio quality all the time. Sometimes it's great and it's awesome. I think YouTubers tend to tend to do a much better job a lot of times because you're hitting both angles, yeah. right? But there's a lot of podcasts that get get started using like an iPhone and that sort of thing. And it's awesome to go out and create, but we want to be able to create tools and solutions to help creators like that. So we came out with the MB1 first, which is a single channel microphone booster, then the MB2 for a dual channel. And then exactly as you pointed out with the dynamite, it's like, it's cool. Like it's fun and, you know, kind of quirky in the, uh, the dynamite packaging and everything, but it's, uh, it is bright red <laughs> yeah. and I didn't really want that to be like part of my setup. Um, and so we took a look at it and said, well, we can improve on a lot of things here. And so that's what we did with the stealth. Yeah. And I mean, the packaging right off the bat, right? Like, I mean, the SE Dynamite packaging, cool. they play in, they play into it. It's hilarious. So it's it. really yeah. funny. Usually I like put boxes away in another box in my garage, but like this <laughs> thing kind of just sits on the shelf. It's kind of funny, but it's bright red. And like, it just, it looks like you have a shotgun shell, just chilling on the top of your mic <laughs> or, or <laughs> dynamite. Yep. Um, so what, let's take me to the drawing board. Let's look, I would love to hear when you approached I mean, you talked about how you you binge podcasts, you love podcasts, you he, you've heard great audio and you've heard really, really bad audio. And a lot of people aren't familiar with preamps. They don't really understand why you need to plug a preamp in. Like I have a mic and I have an audio interface. Isn't that all I need? It's not. So take me to the drawing board and, and what were your priorities when designing the MB Stealth, um, especially when you were kind of looking at competitors that were already kind of filling that need like a fethead or an se dynamite yep totally yeah so i won't get into like the electrical engineering side partially because most people would be bored out of their mind and partially because i would not sound that smart because i'm not um, i work with people that are much smarter than me which works out great but ultimately the concept is this you have a microphone that requires gain you have to be able to put the signal or kind of juice up the signal, right? And your audio interface has a built-in preamp. The issue becomes the quality of the preamps in your interface. Now, like the Shure SM7B, for example, requires 60 dB of gain to perform well. Now, it has been the broadcasting industry standard for decades now, but when you think about a professional broadcast, you think about a recording studio, you think about, you know, a radio station and they have these massive soundboards with preamps that cost into the thousands of dollars. And then us at home guys, we have our, you know, Focusrite, Scarlett's and Persona Studio 24s and whatever it may be, you know, and you might be spending more on your microphone than you did on your audio interface. Right. Right. And so the do. audio interface. Yeah. It's, it, it's the norm. The problem becomes somewhere that audio interface company has to make up their costs and it generally happens with the preamps. So they tend to come with really affordable preamps. Generally, like the cost on those components is in the dimes, nickels and dimes. So you're just not going to get great quality out of it. And think about like, underpowering an engine, right? Like if you are trying to drive a race car and you're giving it, you know, only two cylinders out of the eight that it's got to go on, it's just not going to work. So ultimately that's what we're doing with the stealth. And that's what, uh, outboard preamps, whether it's inline or like the MB one, not inline and requiring two cables, it's requiring that extra juice to get your microphone to, to where it needs to go, especially for super gain hungry mics like the SM7B and the Rode pod mics just below it. I think the pod mic wants like 55 dB of gain and the, uh, the SM7B wants 60. And just to give uh, a, a contrast, your Focusrite Scarlet has 40 dB of gain to provide, if, if I remember right. So gotcha. it's just not even close. No, no, not, not, at, not at all, not, not at all. And then I kind of look at it too, you know, when people use, for instance, USB microphones, right. And they're plugging into a computer and why doesn't it sound as, as good, right? Well, your computer is trying to handle that audio and your computer is made to do a lot of different things and handle a lot of different things. Your camera, right? Why doesn't the audio sound great from a camera? Well, it's made to do a ton of different things. 
And it's some things it's going to do well. Some it's not going to do well. Same thing with your audio interface. It's trying to handle a lot and do a lot, especially the roadcaster. So like you said, to cut costs, they might cut cost uh, on, on the levels and, and the gain that a microphone needs. But then you can get something like the SMB, uh, not the SMB, the, the MB Stealth, which is made to do one thing. And it's made to do one thing very, very well. And it, it does. It's, it's really good. And, it, and it's sleek looking. Uh, how long was the design process to, to roll something like this out? Luckily, this one went a lot quicker just in that we already kind of had our blueprints from the first couple and we put some higher end components in and worked on the form factor was the biggest thing. It was about six month development process working with partners to get that done. Gotcha. And then and I, I think that's the advantage to being just a small scrappy company. You yeah. know, it's not like uh, turning a cruise ship We're you know, we're, we're a tiny little uh, speedboat that turns pretty quick and um, stuff rolls out real quick. Yeah, it's, it's nimble, right? It's nice to not have to like take go through a, a million different levels to make to make stuff happen. Um, yep. So going looking at the product again, um, coming from you, you know, when you look other than the packaging and the color, right? Why being the owner of the company, why would somebody why would you say go with, you know, the MB Stealth over an SE, SE Dynamite other than the price difference, right? Because you guys do come in. um at like ten five or ten dollars cheaper, which is hey every every buck counts. It looks a lot better on on your microphone. But what are some of the other key differences you feel like sets you guys apart? Yeah, you know it's funny. I didn't even realize that we were uh, cheaper until watching you. You know, thirty minutes ago before I came <laughs> on, I th I thought they were cheaper. The last the last time I looked, maybe it was just like Amazon was having like a lightning deal or something. But the last yeah, time I looked, I thought they were cheaper. I'm looking um, at one fourteen so like, oh, ninety nine okay. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously the five bucks doesn't matter. It's not a, we, we didn't design this to be like a budget solution and to figure out the lowest price point available. We designed it to create the highest quality product that we could in that price point. And so the differences that you're going to find between the SE dynamite and the MB stealth are going to be subjective. I would say they make a great product and I will absolutely not bash on them. Uh, SE makes killer microphones. Um, but we made the improvements that we made only knowing our circuit board, right? Like I can't say, oh, they have this transformer and we have this one. I know that we put the best in there that we could fit and that would fit into that price point. Um, I think they did a great job. I like ours better, but I'm not going to say that it's, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll, audio is very subjective. Really, And is, so yeah. I, I don't think, um, if you're the average Joe, you're not going to hear a big difference between the two. If you have really great headphones and a really finely tuned ear, you might. Now, if you look at some of the cheaper budget options, you absolutely will. As long as you're not wearing, like you said earlier, like Apple earbuds while you're doing it. If you're listening with some quality reference monitors or headphones, you're going to hear the difference. And the biggest difference that you're going to hear is in the transparency. Is this like changing the color and the tone of my microphone, or is it keeping that natural tone? Uh, now, maybe if you have like a really cheap $20 mic, it might be good to change the color of that tone. Um, but if you're using something like the pod mic or the SM7B, you paid good money for a good mic and you want it to sound the way that it was designed to be. And that's yeah. what you'll find in the Stealth is a crazy low noise floor while still boosting it 28 dB and really, really transparent tone. Yeah. And just listening as of right now, just moder monitoring myself with it, it, it sounds great. The nose, the noise floor is a lot lower. And as I mentioned, you know, I, even though, you know, both you and SE advertise at 28 dB of, of gain, I've noticed my levels are, can be a little bit, a little bit lower with the stealth, which is, which is awesome, which probably has to do with, yeah. you know, the engineering that, that's inside in your own technology. And it's, it's great, man. I, I absolutely love it. It looks a lot Thanks. better than a shotgun shell. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys sending it out to, to check out. Thanks for, thanks for coming ac across my channel and, uh, and sending it out, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, I won't take up yeah, too man, much I, of I your time. I really appreciated unless... your content. Yeah. yeah cool thanks, stuff. man. Um, I won't take up any more of your time unless you have anything else you want to shout out about Coda and why people should, should, you know, go check you guys out. 
Yeah, no, I'd just say thank you so much for the time. It's, it's really cool to talk to other creators and get a chance to talk to your audience as well. Um, this is our launch week right now for the Stealth. So if you're interested in it, um, I think Jared has a link below. Click on that link and um, let us know what you think. If you and if you podcast with it, if you do a YouTube channel with it, uh, send us a link, email us, DM us on Instagram, all that stuff. We would love to hear you. We really love connecting with creators and performers and musicians as a small company that is just like everybody else and not a large corporation. Like we're in the weeds with you and we love to talk to anybody that's trying out our product. So please check out that link and uh, let us know when you do. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks, Jared. Take care. Yep. What a cool guy. Super cool. I mean, to like take the time to come on, you know, my show and chat with me in my, my little office. Super cool. Right. Um, sounds great as, as Leo brings out and, um, you know, great product, right? It, it really is. It is subjective. It is very close to the SC dynamite. It all comes down to your needs, right? When I was searching for a preamp, why did I go with the SC dynamite over the cloud lifter, right? It just fit my needs better. I didn't have to have that extra cable. I didn't have to have a box, another box to deal with. And it was just more sleek. Why am I going to use this over the SC Dynamite now? Because the noise floor, I think, is a little bit better. It, even though it says it, it delivers the same amount of gain, I still think it's a little bit better because my levels are, aren't as high as it was with the SC Dynamite. And it's way slicker, guys. It looks a lot better than having a giant red thing on the top of your microphone. But if this is your jam and you want to actually plug it into the back of the Rodecaster instead of the mic, then yeah, then go with the SD Dynamite because this actually fits where this doesn't into the back of the Rodecaster. I still need to try to see if this will plug into any other audio interfaces like the, um, the Zoom H6, which I use for when I'm on on set, you know, shooting stuff with clients. So anyway, guys, thanks. Thanks for like, you know, coming in and, and hanging out with me this afternoon and, and checking out the new stealth, which is, is it is really awesome. Peter, you said um, it wasn't available in your country. Um, and I would assume they, they, they shipped to Europe. So reach out to them, reach out to them on Instagram or as Roxanne says, um, see if it'll, if the U S site, Amazon site will, will ship there. You can use the link cause it works. It worked for her and, and she's getting it. I think so really cool. Um, Leo says improving my audio will be my focus for next year. Focusing on lighting this year. Dude, that's a, that's a great goal. And I always say that like pick one thing, improve on that, nail it, move on to the next man. You know what I noticed with this boom arm? You can't hold on. I'm going to see that light because not only is it looking on me, but it looks, it looks good back there. We're going to figure this out. All right. Uh, Rob says, hit us up on our website. We ship to Europe. So go check that out. Um, I'll put, after we're done with the stream, I'll put a link to their website in the description for you, Peter. Um, and um, I'll, I'll reach out on just create more directly to you for that link. How about that? How's that for customer service? I'll reach out to you on our own little platform. Just create more. Go check it out, guys, on Mighty Networks. It's the best. Um, and I forgot how how good of an inter interview you are. Good job. I mean, it's just having a conversation, right? Like, I don't, I don't, I try not to over prep. I just want to have a conversation and ask the questions I would ask. But yeah, reach out to Rob or reach out to Coda um, on their website. They, they respond to DMs on Instagram too. So really, really cool. Great company. Rob. If you're still there, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks for sending, like, look at that handwritten note, guys. Handwritten note. Can you see that? Thanks, Rob. It's really nice. Like I said, guys, you never know what video you're going to make. It's going to get you in front of somebody and, like, super, super awesome. Peter, great. Thanks. No problem, dude. All right, guys. Um, it's really hot not having the AC on right now. So <laughs> um, we're going to end the stream so I can turn the AC back on. Uh, if you found value in this stream, I love doing them. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, and don't forget to hit the like button. It really, really means a ton. And guys, well, you know, I'm going to hit my little outro button and it's going to end the stream, which is 
you got to get a stream deck for streams. It's, it's super cool. And how did you like the, the, the multicam setup? Really loving that. Shout out to, you know, we all know Tom Buck, right, for inspiring live streams like this. All right, guys. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.